Okay, we're back. So carburetor's out of the car now, obviously. Uh, let's take it apart. I'm going to try and describe how various pieces of this work, uh, what you should touch, what you shouldn't. Um, so it's just kind of a general guide, but there's a lot of different variations on this, so your carburetors may not match these exactly. And that's okay. The, the principles generally should be the same. Um, so anyway, you want to start. Uh, I like to have a flat surface to work on, right? So, you know, you put it there, it's flat, and so on and so forth. So the more of those I can create, the better. So why don't we start by taking the dash pot off. So we can talk a little bit about how it works. There might be some oil in there. If there is, that's okay. Uh, these screws, originally from the factory, they were not Phillips head. They were what's called posit drive. So you can get a special bit for that. Or I mean, a, a Phillips screwdriver will probably work as well. Here's the oil I mentioned. Keep that down there to. set anyway and then also just to keep parts from rolling around it's a good idea to have a tray of some kind handy Okay, I can tell you right off, this doesn't seem correct. That spring seems a bit long for me, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I've been working on GT6 carburetors, so I'm going to compare it to some other ones that I have. But um, use the correct pieces. Don't just stretch it out because you want it to have a little bit more force. It was designed the way it was for a reason. feels like it's been replaced at some point. Now this this damper actually feels like very thick material. Sorry, not damper. Um, I can't even think of what it's called. This this rubber gasket here. Um, it feels like it's made of very thick material, which might be why the spring was stretched. I'm wondering if this is almost too thick. It was probably replaced at some point, and then the extra strength on the spring was meant to force the piston back down. Get a better quality one of these. Um, you, you really, you can't just replace parts and make your own carburetor. These things are pretty carefully engineered to begin with. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's take this one apart here. Careful, by the way, not to toss a needle into anything. By the way, I don't know if you can see this. That is some terrible black goop on there. I guarantee you that is one of the principal reasons this car was not running was sludge. Just build up general gunk, I guess. But even though this appears to be in good shape, I don't trust appearances. I want to take it apart anyway. you have here in terms of how it goes together. Uh, now the needle, depending on the year of your carburetor, see so this has 
Maybe you can see it. There's a slot that kind of goes here. Anytime you see that on a Stromberg carburetor, it means that you've got the type that adjusts from the top, or at least that's what the air piston was originally from. And so we're going to need a special tool to go down in here. Uh, we're going to sort of untwist the needle from a bit. I'll show you what I mean in here in a moment, but let's take this apart because I don't like having the needle just ready to get damaged there either. You're going to need a small screwdriver. There is a screw deep in there. also talk about the rest of this oil while we're I know I've already taken that out, but let me show you basically what this tool is doing. Diaphragm, by the way, is the word I was looking for earlier. Okay, so this fits into the slot. That keeps this from turning. And the reason you don't want the, the piston to move back and forth is because you're going to tear the diaphragm, which is held in by the top of the dash pot. So that keeps that from moving, and we don't need to worry about it too much because it's out. Then there's an Allen key that fits into the needle and it changes, maybe you can see that, changes the height of the needle as you turn it. It moves in and out. So by, it's maybe difficult to see from where you're at, but the needle is thinner at the bottom than it is at the top, and it fits into the jet. That's the hole that's in the, in the base of the carburetor. And the whole idea behind it is that there's really only a, a, a small portion that actually matters. That's where the fuel is trying to squeeze in the space that's available. So if the needle's very thin, more fuel can come out. If it's very thick, less fuel can come out. It's as simple as that. And so do not sand this needle. Don't change the shape of it. Um, these are set up the way they are for a reason. It's very, very tight tolerances in it. So that's just something you want to be aware of there too. But anyway, we need to get it out. That's done. Do not hit this very hard. You're going to damage something. I'll try and move it more in center so you can see it. what I drove out. It's basically a screw that fits into the needle. And if you remember, this set screw, right, goes in the side. It fits in that slot. So it prevents the needle from turning. So what happens when you unscrew it? Well, the needle can't twist. It has to go up and down. That's how the mechanism works. There is an O-ring, this guy in here, and that is what keeps oil from leaking through the carburetor. Uh, so if you're constantly refilling your dash pots, this O-ring has gone. You need to get that out of there.
I'm going to clean this up in a minute. There is also one other piece. There it is. Here, I'll put it on here. It's easier to see. This little guy holds a threaded piece in so it can't move up and down. That's why you have to tap it out with a hammer. Just get something that's kind of long, um, long enough to fit through it, but that's not going to damage anything. Again, I just use a piece of brass rod that happens to be thin enough. Uh, you can pick that up at most hardware stores. So keep those parts together. Careful not to lose anything. And set them apart. I'm sorry, set them to one side here. I like to keep everything organized so that I can put it back together. So four screws, dash pot, spring. into it. I'm going to empty that out. Okay. Be prepared. You are going to get the gas to fall out of this as you're going along. Okay. Alright, where do we want to start here? Somebody has blocked this off. That's never good when you're modifying your own carburetor designs. starter box. You might think of it as a choke. easier to remove than it is right now. That's obviously quite stuck. Well, it does move. Okay, so before I took this off the car, I couldn't get the, the choke to move to save my life. You might be able to see there's kind of a, uh, well, basically dried gas and gunk there. This was frozen solid to the side of the carburetor. That's what happened. I couldn't move the choke. Not really a wonder that I couldn't get enough fuel to start the car. But no worries, we'll press on. Let's see. Temperature compensator. Not all Triumphs have this, but a good number of the Stromberg carb ones will at least in the U.S. Not the correct screw, that's okay. Somebody has rebuilt this. There's two O-rings that you're going to want to watch. There's one, and you can see by how flexible it is. This has been replaced before, but you know, just for grins and giggles, we're probably going to replace it again anyway. There's then another O-ring here. Okay, I'm going to take that off as well. And then a lot of times gunk kind of gets set in here. So uh, the temperature compensator. Now. The 
The only reason you really want to take this apart is basically to give it a, a little bit of a clean, but do not take it too far apart. I'm going to lose that piece. Because this is something that was adjusted at the factory. It is a not really technically adjustable. You can find some articles on how to do it, but whether or not it works, I don't know. So basically, in here, this is a bimetal strip, okay? Not unlike an old school thermostat. So uh, it's two pieces of metal that are sandwiched together. Uh, one, uh, one of them expands uh, more than the other does at a given temperature, and so if that happens but they're glued together, you're going to get it to twist. So one side of this metal strip heats up faster than the other, and this plunger then, which it's connected to, will twist. Okay? So that's opening up this valve. It's letting more air in. That air, by the way, goes through this hole, which leads into here, and it lets it into the body of the carburetor. Notably, it lets it into the body of the carburetor kind of back there, which is on the other side of the piston. So anytime that, that, that something is uh, affecting the carburetor on this side of this line, it's already using the mixture that you've already got set. If your mixture is incorrectly set, it doesn't matter how much or how little air this lets in, it's relative already to, to the, the way you've got the carburetor set up. So um, it's not horribly important, but just something to keep in mind. Make sure that this tube is clear. Uh, you do need the air to get through if you're going to have it working properly. A lot of people tighten down this nut and seal it off. I do not recommend that. This is required for the proper operation of your carburetor. So either learn to set it up correctly or I guess give it a try. You're not going to hurt too much or just get a new one. Uh, this is moving, so I'm just going to go under the assumption that it's probably okay and I'm not going to futz with it. Okay. Keep going. This is your idle trim screw. And it does exactly the same thing as a temperature compensator. It lets more air in after the fact down a hole here. Again, it's on this side of the air piston, so your mixture's already been determined. This is a way to finely tune uh, your, your mixture. Next is the bypass valve. Wrong screwdriver. I'm going to move the camera for this one, so, so I'll show you how some of these components work after I get this a little bit more apart. actually coming apart very easily, which is unusual sometimes for these carbs. And what that's telling me is somebody has rebuilt these, so while I'm putting it back together, I'm going to be questioning, did they do it correctly? Or do I have to fix somebody else's mistakes? Which is more often the case. out of the way, I will show you how this works. So, ignore the gasket for now, but a little bit complicated. This is another device. Now, this doesn't change the mixture. This uses your existing mixture, and when you are driving along and you're at, you're at kind of high revs, right? Maybe you're on the highway, throttles open, you're letting all sorts of fuel in, and then all of a sudden you close it. You let off the gas, you're just coasting. So now what's happened is that you've got a very high manifold on the vacuum. There's nowhere for the fuel to go. Um, but because of the high, vac uh, the high um, uh, vacuum that you've got, long story short, you're going to get the engine kind of popping and backfiring on overrun. And that is what this is designed to fix. And the way that it works, with the throttle closed, there is a hole here. 
which I don't know if you can see my screwdriver kind of dipping in and out. That's where it goes, so it attaches to this bed. This side of the hole then goes into the carburetor. That's that's the mixed uh, the mixed air and fuel on the other side of this throttle plate. So it's not getting into the engine unless it goes from here into there. It's a third little hole way up here, and that's for manifold vacuum. Okay. So the idea of this part is that it's a valve that under certain conditions lets fuel go from here into there and therefore into the engine. That's all it does. It opens up a door from there to there so that you can have a, a little bit more uh, mixed fuel going into the engine. It uh, controls the amount and it's all based on manifold vacuum. So how does it work? There's a diaphragm on the inside and I can actually show you and we'll see if it's working at the same time. Okay, as you can see, I've got the bypass valve set up in a vise. I've got a dial indicator on it, uh, and we're going to basically watch it move, although the amount that it moves isn't as important as the fact that you see this dial moving back and forth. So it's on top of the valve, right? We saw earlier that was the valve that, that moves in and out. That's what's going to allow air to move from one side to the other. This up here is the port that the vacuum would be attached to. So. We'll hook up our vacuum gauge to this. I happen to know that this one's already leaking, so I'm going to put my finger on the side that's leaking. Just to plug it off, and as we add some vacuum to it, if we can get it in there correctly. There you go. See the valves open, closed. Open, closed. There you go. Uh, interesting point about it leaking is that on this particular one, take it out of this rig here, on this particular one, the seal around this screw is where the vacuum is leaking. And so uh, while the manifold's drawing it in here, it's pulling it straight out on the other side. And so that's going to cause a very lean condition in the car because it's just pulling air straight in through the bypass valve at all times. Uh, so that this one's going to need to be resealed before it's going to work properly, but that's why the car, one of the reasons anyway, the car wasn't running was the vacuum was basically just sucking in outside air. So once that's sealed off properly, what's going to happen is you add vacuum through this port, this valve will move in and out, uh, and when you have a high manifold vacuum, which is what this is designed to detect, it's going to open the port, allow more fuel in, and the engine will run without backfiring and uh, potentially causing damage in the system. Okay. This plastic piece is just to make the hose fit. That pops right off. The only reason really that you want this off is so that I can spray everything down with carburetor cleaner and not damage the plastic parts. More fuel. Easy come, easy go. Okay, float chamber. This will probably be filled with gunk. By the way, if you saw the color of that gas, it was not clear. Perfect for the lawnmower and small bits. float chamber filled of course with all sorts of varnish and sludge. We're going to clean that out. Floats which I can actually already tell you aren't exactly correctly set. Let's get this gasket out of the way too. in here too. And we have our needle valve. As a rule I hate adjustable wrenches but this one was within reach. I'm going to 
the place is anyway. plate will be the last bit here that I need to do, but technically, you know, yeah, I'm going to spray everything down with carb cleaner, so we'll want to anyway, but uh, a couple other parts I want to show you. So uh, the float bowl has a vent in it, and if that vent is blocked, a lot of times you'll see fuel that's sort of pouring out from the carburetor, and you think, oh no, why is that happening? Uh, well, a lot of times it's because somebody's just plugged up the vent. And so if you have a carb with this on the side of it, and with this on the side of it, what's happening is as the throttle opens and closes, you can see it's kind of moving that needle in and out. First of all, you want to make sure that's free. All that is, it's a valve so that the vent either goes to here, which goes into the uh, uh, air cleaner and then down the throat of the carb. That's what uh, most of the older Strombergs and SUs will have. It'll be a vent on the outside that just gets recycled. Or one on the side, and that goes to the charcoal canister. Uh, it's an emissions thing. Uh, but if your vent is frozen and it's, and it's not moving back and forth, um, again, it could affect the operation of the carb. Do not cap this off. If you do, then your float bowl isn't going to be able to vent. It's going to cause pressure fuel is going to be spilling out the sides. That's what this is there to do. Uh, there are ways to modify it, but I'm not going to get into that because generally speaking, you don't have to. I'm going to be adjusting this from scratch anyway, so I don't need this in right now. take the throttle out anyway. Gone this far, might as well do the rest, right? You generally do not want to reuse these screws. They're peened on the other side. That keeps them from coming out. Your throttle plate and get that out, there are two O-rings. There's one, there's the other. I guess it's not technically an O-ring, but actually from the looks of it, this is not in terrific shape, or maybe it's just dirty. I'm looking at the brass bit, okay. So it's just dirty, but if this hasn't been replaced, you can get the pieces, they, they usually come with the rebuild kits, so you want to get those out of there too. Especially if you're going to be dunking this into a tank of carburetor cleaner, get those out. That's what seals to, to keep additional air from leaking around the throttle shafts. In older SUs, uh, I guess all SUs, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, and with older Strombergs, a lot of times you hear about the throttle shafts wearing. They will do that, but the, the O-rings that are in there are actually what does the sealing action. And so if these aren't really uh, rubbing metal on metal, it's generally being held by the O-rings, and that's what more or less keeps it centered. You don't have to throw out the throttle shaft all the time. Just make sure that it's sealing correctly, and that's it. Move the carb body out of the way. And 
and I had a wrench. There we go. Probably should have done this before removing the car, but maybe it'll work. to snap your fingers with this extra spring here. That's what that does. There you go. That's your throttle. This screw here, right on the end, rides against your starter box. So that's what causes the fast idle. When you turn, or when you pull the choke, it rotates this. And the cam, this whole big metal piece, will hit on here and cause your throttle to open. And so you adjust your fast idle by rotating this in and out. If you need a faster idle with, uh, well, with the choke pulled. Uh, if with the choke pulled, you want it to idle a little bit faster, unscrew this. And so that's how you would control that. There is a spec as you're rebuilding it. These pieces off. Again, be careful to keep everything in order. You can always refer to a, a diagram or a video somewhere, but it's easiest if it's just not moved in the first place. 